This scene plays out every day in our country. Exposed victims are delivered to the emergency department of a hospital or clinic where trained staff, often referred to as first receivers, spring into action and stabilize the injured. Sometimes first receivers are exposed to chemical and biological risks brought in by that victim. The purpose of this training is to help first receivers understand and mitigate risk when treating potentially contaminated patients. Selecting the proper level of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is part of risk management. According to OSHA, there are four levels of protection, labeled A, B, C, and D. Level A is the most protective, and level D is the least protective. We'll look more closely at each level. Levels A and B offer the highest standards for respiratory protection. Users of the equipment breathe high-purity bottled air from a portable source. With Level A equipment, however, there is absolutely no skin exposed to the external environment. In Level B, skin and eye protection is not absolute, although protection is still very high. Equipment for both Levels A and B is commonly used for protection against very toxic chemical agents. It is rarely used during normal hospital operations to prevent contagious impact from infectious pathogens. To learn more about respirators, visit the website on your screen. Level C protective equipment is commonly seen in hospitals and is used during environmental emergencies or disasters. It can offer the same skin protection as Level B. It uses an air-purifying respirator that filters the air entering the lungs rather than a cylinder of bottled air. Health workers can protect themselves from the Ebola virus using Level C protective equipment. Level D protection is standard work clothing. In Level D, there is no special skin, eye, or respiratory protection. Let's go back to Level C for a moment and look at how respirators work. A filter is used to purify the inhaled air, which efficiently catches even the smallest particles, including viruses and bacteria. Air can pass through a filter in two ways, by pushing or pulling it through the filter. Don't confuse protective devices like paper dust masks with respirators. Air purifying respirators, or APRs, provide far superior protection. When you take a breath, a small vacuum in the mask forces air to enter, causing you to pull the air through the respirator filter into your lungs. If the mask does not fit well or is not tight around your face, contaminated air can slip in through open areas. Although not ideal, this leakage is considered an acceptable hazard in Level C equipment. Powered air purifying respirators, or PAPRs, are more advanced. These use a motor to push air through the filter and into the respirator. Since air is being pushed through the filter using a positive pressure and over the face, contaminants cannot slip through any gaps. Paprers are also more comfortable to wear because the air rushing into the respirator cools the face. Simply wearing appropriate clothing and a respirator, however, is not enough. Donning or putting on protective items and doffing or taking them off must be done correctly to avoid contamination. You may already know that many unnecessary infections during the 2014 Ebola epidemic in West Africa were due to improper removal of contaminated clothing. The same may be said of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. As a first receiver, when you're performing a task that involves risk, you need to be cautious and aware at all times. Any patient may be harboring unknown or unseen biohazards. The precautions described in this video will help you, but added precautions specific to the circumstances you face may be necessary. Be safe, and thank you for your time.